I hadn't heard about surrogate partner therapy um, at all before meeting you. And I guess that first introduction has sort of sparked an interest in how this kind of therapy can help women um, with vaginismus in particular, but any sort of person out there struggling with uh, painful sex or experiencing painful sex, I should say. I don't really like the word struggling. Um, so tell us a bit more then about uh, surrogate partner therapy itself. What sure. So surrogate partner therapy is a therapeutic model um, where we work in what's called a therapeutic triad. So there's a surrogate partner, there's a client, and there's a supervising therapist, often a sex therapist, but not necessarily. Um, and usually what happens is a client is... Um, is dealing with certain issues where they need help beyond what traditional talk therapy can provide. Um, whether it's relationship modeling, whether it is using the body to overcome um, certain traumatic roadblocks. Um, and that's when they call a surrogate partner. Um, so we go through um, both structured and unstructured exercises with the client. Um, and we work in tandem with the talk therapist. So while we are doing relationship modeling and a lot of somatic awareness and skill building, they're continuing to process the experience with the therapist. Okay. So it takes the talk therapy really to another level, which I feel is absolutely, absolutely necessary when we're talking about something that's so uh, intimate and related to the physical experience, because mm -hmm. that's what the term somatic really is, right? Maybe define like somatic it's, experience. It's, it's, somatic is just experience in the body. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's plenty of research out there that says that your body has its own kind of memory. Um, so it needs a certain type of education or re-education when things go wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think then that would be so useful when it comes to people who um, aren't feeling comfortable experiencing that body sensation or even having that communication if they do have a partner but probably more so even for um, people who don't have a partner and need to get over that hump of the painful experience before, hopefully before being well with a partner and introducing them to that conversation. Cause it's not always an easy conversation to have. No, no, it's not. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, just in general, there's a lot of shame built around sexuality mm -hmm. and if your sexuality is functioning, functioning outside the normal, um, there's even more shame on top of that. You know, somehow I am broken because I cannot do X, Y, and Z. Um, and that, that's an incredibly hurtful um, self kind of self story to have. Um, and it's one that really isn't necessary because people aren't broken irreparably. It just takes a little bit of work to get back to a healthy point where they can be sexual with others. 